Welcome to AERA Solutions channel. In this video, we'll be looking at vector operations that's how we manipulate vector quantities, more particularly forces which applies to statics, a branch of engineering mechanics. As an outline, first we'll look at vector additions, then we'll progress to vector multiplication, and quickly we're going to see some of the properties of vector quantities that's vector operations first and foremost vector addition vectors are added either diagrammatically or analytically that is to say we can add up vectors by drawing what you call polygon of forces and looking for a side that will close the entire polygon and that will be the resultant effect of all the forces put together then also we can add vectors by taking them to component forms and add similar components to themselves and when we are adding vectors we are looking we are getting what they call resultants especially as it contains forces vector multiplication could be scalar products or could be vector products by scalar multiplication we are looking at a form of multiplication in which our final answer would be a scalar quantity that just a number and a scalar product could be dot products where you are multiplying two vector quantities to get a scalar result that you get a number and it could be scalar triple products usually when we're multiplying three quantities together to get what you call a scalar result but um, vectors also could be vector products we also have the cross products which involves vector multiplication of two vector quantities and vector triple, triple products that involves multiplication of three quantities we're going to see a lot of examples on all this but um, it is just the cross product that is really vital when we're looking at moments we'll come back to cross products to see how you can multiply vector quantities then we're going to use this example to illustrate some of these things so if we have a nail on top of a table for instance and we have two forces pulling the nail one to the right upwards and the second to the left upwards and um, to analyze a problem like this in mechanics you must introduce your coordinate system we can say that maybe the first force f1 has an angle to the horizontal axis theta one and the second force has an angle to the horizontal as is theta 2. Now knowing this, from this we can easily find, we can easily add these two vector quantities either by taking two components or using diagrams. We're going to illustrate that quickly but it's important we note that the coordinate system can take any form. It's not compulsory that you must have perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical as is. It could be something like this. We are in the the x axis is parallel to the direction of the force f1 and of course the force f2 is inclined at an angle to either the vertical axis or the horizontal axis so these are simple examples i want to quickly look at how these two forces can be added could be any vector using diagram method then i'm going to illustrate how these forces can be added using an analytical method and we're going to be applying this a lot as far as statics is concerned to do the addition of these two forces using diagrammatic method there are two principles that we can apply the first one either we're using the parallelogram law or we are using what you call the principles of triangle of forces mind you if there are more than two forces say there are three there are four or more what you use is what you call the polygon of forces and the procedure involves just drawing diagrams in form of a polygon as the case may be or a triangle or a parallelogram and you draw, draw to scale using the dimension that you have then the unknown parts you close the diagram or the polygon to be able to determine the sum of the forces to illustrate this, using this example, I'm going to try to explain the principles of parallelogram and the triangular law. The parallelogram law states that, that if two forces are drawn, drawn to represent the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, this is F2 now, representing two adjacent sides, two sides that are touching of a parallelogram, 
Of course, we have to make this a parallelogram by closing up. Parallelogram is just a four-sided figure in which two sides are parallel. So once you have this now, note these two sides are parallel. And this side is parallel to this side. So once you have this, the parallelogram law says that the diagonal drawn from the point of intersection of the two forces is equivalent to the sum of the two forces or what we call resultant of the two forces so what we're treating the law if two sides two adjacent sides of a parallelogram are used to represent two forces force one and force two the diagonal drawn from the point of intersection of the two forces is equivalent to the sum of the two forces so that is to say diagrammatically if you draw this two sides of a parallelogram one side two side equal in magnitude to the two forces that their values is equivalent to the dimensions that we have here the diagonal drawn from point of intersection represents the resultant of the two forces. Then the triangle of forces. For this case, you are making the two forces represent two sides of the tri triangle. But the difference between the parallelogram law and the tri triangular law is that for the parallelogram law, you are drawing the two forces to meet at their tails. The two forces meet at their tail. In one of our videos, we talk about a force having a tail and the edge and of course the length is the magnitude the length of the force is the magnitude so of a triangular law you draw a force such that where the edge of one force is that is where the other force commences from and if you close it to form a triangle we are saying the third side of the triangle represents the sum of the two forces and if you note this triangle is equivalent to this side of our parallelogram and if you start drawing this triangle from f2 you're going to get the other side of the parallelogram you can also draw this triangle of force starting from the second force this is f2 now then f1 is like this the same magnitude the same direction and this becomes the resultant and this triangle is just like seeing this other side of the parallelogram but what about if it is more than more than two forces let's say there's another force here Let's say this is F3 and we could add another one and let's say this is F4. How can this be evaluated diagrammatically? The same procedure. Draw your what you call a force polygon. You join one force from T to edge. Note that this is F1. Look at our diagram. This is the direction of F1. So you must draw F1 in the same direction too. This is F2 the direction and the magnitude you continue from the head of the other one this becomes f2 the next is f3 this one is f3 where do you continue you continue from the head of the other one f3 is like this f3 the same direction the magnitude will be equal to the length of the force and finally f4 this is f4 so we want to draw f4 the same direction and the magnitude will be the length of F4. What happens? What will be the resultant of all these forces? The resultant of all these forces when you add them together will be the length of this line. This becomes the resultant. This becomes the sum of all these forces put together. So once you can do this, you have effectively added these forces together and you have determined the unknown. So summarily, what we are saying is you can use diagrams to find the equivalent of all forces added together. So we're quickly going to see how this can be done analytically. The way to go is to take each of the force, each of the forces to its components. 
So you have to resolve F1 into Fx1 i plus F2 Fx2 Fs1 j. And of course, you have to resolve F2 into components to get what you call Fs2 i plus Fs2 j. Then how do we add up F1 plus F2? will be equal to you add up fs1 and fs2 to get let's say f3i then you add fs1g to fs2 again to have what you have to have say let's say what you have what to call f3j and this value becomes the sum of the forces and you can easily take this to magnitude by just finding f three square plus f three square this is x f three x square and f three y square and this will give us what you call let's say f three in magnitude and of course you can find the angle that f three is making with the horizontal act term fx fy over fx Sorry, actan is Fy over Fs. And once this is done, you've added your force, your force using analytical method. If you have more than one force in the system, say there is another force here. Let's say this is F3. The same procedure applies, you just resolve all the forces. F1 will give you something like Fs1 I plus Fy1 J. F2 will be give you something like Fx2 I plus Fy2 J. And F3 will give you, you resolve it to this component, Fs3 I plus Fy3 J. Three forces. You want to find a resultant. Let's say F is equal to F1 plus F2 plus F3. What do we do? We just add similar components such that f will be equal to if you add this plus this plus this to get the i components we have something like f x i then if you add this the y components and this and this to get something like f y j once this is done you can easily take these values to what you call the magnitude of f to have its value and you can find its angle as well and once you can do this you have successfully added up the vectors or the forces as these cases using analytical technique now let's quickly look at some of the limitations with using diagram method to add up vectors the first issue is that for multiple force systems, it becomes more difficult to use the diagram method. Reason being that it becomes a problem to actually draw efficiently. You may have to draw too many of these forces. And that aside, even if you are to compute after drawing, it, it becomes too complex to, less to determine the angles between the points where two or more forces are meeting. Then for three-dimensional force system, it becomes a problem to use the diagrammatical method. So these are the limitations with diagram method. So as a result, the best approach usually is to master the analytical method so that you can apply it for whatever condition of forces. Well, we've just presented vector operations, addition of vectors to be precise. We will release point videos for multiplication of vectors and vector properties as the case may be we want to quickly begin to see how these vector additions can be applied to manipulating forces as far as statics is concerned for two-dimensional and three-dimensional systems so i do hope you find this video helpful thank you for watching do well to subscribe to the channels and click the notification bell to see more of such videos.